So can you please tell me how did you got started with Airbnb and short-term rentals? Yes, um, in Fayette County, uh, West Virginia, uh, new, the New River Gorge and all of its surrounding um, just turned into a national park. So there was a lot more tourists and stuff coming to our area. And um, I knew of a few people who had started doing Airbnb. Um, so we knew more of the tourists, you know, would come. So that's where we got started, the, the idea from. And can you tell me how did you acquire your first um, listing, your first property to the Airbnb? Yeah, well, um, we bought our first home um, a year ago. So we were still living in our home. And um, so we didn't really want to like go out on a limb where there wasn't many Airbnbs started yet. So we decided to start our own home, um, just list our own home at first, just to see how it would do. So we actually moved out of our own home um, and we just listed um, our house just for the summer, just to kind of like, just as a trial run. Mm -hmm. I see. And um, <clears throat> sorry, you told me the recently there was a change around your area. It turned into a national park, right? Yes. How long ago was that? Um, within the year or two. Oh, and yeah. did you got started on Airbnb at the same time or did it take a little bit more? Um, I think it was within the same year we started. Okay, that's great. Yeah. And um, while you were listing your own house, did you move out from it or were you still in there? Yes, um, we just moved somewhere else just for the summer, um, mm -hmm. and we, we listed our house full-time through the summer. And how was your experience with that? Um, we actually put it on Airbnb in March, um, and we listed it through the very first of October. Um, within, I would say, um, three days, we got our very first listing, and it hasn't stopped since then. It's been a great turnout. That's great. And um, during that period where you were renting like your own house, was everything good? How was like your feeling renting your own private home? Um, we just took extra safety as far as like mattress protectors. Um, mm -hmm. I cleaned them. So um, it made me feel good that I could clean them and then give everyone a good experience. And where it's my own home, I don't know. It's actually a little bit better just because I make it special for the guest coming in, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I fully understand. And yes. what about your second listing? How did you get it? Um, our second listing, um, it was just luck of the draw, honestly. We, we know we wanted to expand. Mm -hmm. um, so it was a little bit smaller house, but it was in town. So um, we just came across that and we just jumped on it. And it, we've had a great experience with that too. We just listed it um, last week. Yeah. Last week. Oh my God. So that's pretty recent. Yes. And, um, your first listing is still your uh, primary house or not? Yeah. Our first listing um, was our own home. Mm -hmm. And then our second listing is, yeah, is our rental home. Okay. I see. And uh, did it take a long financing process to finance that second listing you just told me about? Yeah, um, with our own home, it was a little bit easier because we just kind of like left all of our furniture, all the beds and everything in there. So it took way less money. Um, I would say it took, we took all of our um, income, which was two months income from Airbnb on our very first home. And then we invested it into um, the second home as far as like furniture, decor, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Uh, did you have to make a, a loan for that one? No, we did not. Mm -mm. Okay. So. No, we got a really good, mm -hmm. it's, it was kind of like a rent -home deal. So um, we didn't have to put like the down payment. So we were able to invest more money into the home as far as like making it homey for our guest. Okay. That's great to hear. Yes. And okay. So two months of income to invest in furnishing the property, right? Yes. And can you tell me about how much was that and what uh, amenities and furniture did you manage to get with that two months income? Yeah, um, not including like um, what we were paying for our actual home. I would say we only had to put maybe like 
maybe two grand in it all where it was a smaller house. We, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we didn't have to, yeah, invest much. Okay. Yeah. That's a good amount actually. And how, how small is the house? Just one bedroom, one bathroom? Um, it's a three bedroom, two bath, but the house itself is a little bit smaller where it's in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mm -hmm. see now. Okay. Yeah. So can you tell me a little bit about your market? Um, yeah, our very first, um, our home is a four bedroom, two bath. So, um, mm -hmm. our market ranges, um, July is kind of our highest month. It's like our high season. So, um, the very highest that we went is two ninety eight per night. And then when we first listed it, we were just kind of like playing the field a little bit, playing off of other listings and kind of things like that. And for a four bedroom, we went to 189 a night. Mm -hmm. And can you tell me if the market currently is very like busy and competitive with Airbnb or are there very few of them? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yes. If your market is currently very busy and um, like full with Airbnbs and short-term rentals. Yeah. Um, Yes, even July, our highest month, um, we don't have a single day open. It's completely booked up, um, and that's with our own home. So with our rental house, um, it being listed only last week, it hit the market last week. Um, we have, I would say, maybe 20 bookings already. Wow, 20 yes. bookings, that's a lot. So it yes. means that the market is very good then. Yes. So it's still like in the... Um, stage where it's a very good place to invest in? I would say, I would mm -hmm. say so, yes, especially where it's, it's becoming a national forest. Mm -hmm. So a lot more people with, yeah, are starting to come. Okay, I see. And so with your first listing, what could you say was your high season and your low season during, you know, a year of renting? Okay. Um, our very first, um, with our very first home, we started, we listed it in March and we're only listing our own home until October and we're going to move back in. Um, I would say our high season definitely is July. Um, we have a lot of things going on in Fett County too, as far as like whitewater rafting. Um, we do live music, stuff like that here too. So I feel like there's a lot of that going on. So that's definitely our high season. Um, even with our low season, even if we're pulling off the market in October, we still have in Fett County golly season. Um, it's it's w part of whitewater rafting too. So I don't even think that we would have a low season until maybe December, January. December, January. Okay. And how yeah. much um, revenue do you estimate during the high season? Like you said, July, October? Um, July alone with one home, um, uh, just with our own house, we are expected to make, um, 10 grand in just July. 10 grand. That's yes. a lot. Ooh, yes. That's great. So, um, sorry to ask you again. I might have heard it wrong before. Did you just start uh -huh. renting your house during March this year or last year? March of this year. March this year. Yes. Okay. So I understand. Um, so can you tell me a little bit more about the, oh, how did you make your market research to find out, for example, the pricing and to estimate how much could you make and stuff like that? Um, we definitely joined like Facebook, uh, Facebook groups as far as that goes. Um, they're really helpful as far as like across the, the nation, um, just good things, bad things, you know, what to expect, stuff like that. Um, as far as pricing goes, we honestly just got on Airbnb ourselves as travelers, um, traveling to Fett County and just like started uh, searching the market around houses that are, were kind of like ours, like the bigger, um, the bigger four bedroom homes, stuff like that. And just kind of see what the, um, what the market is around us. And we just went from there. Mm -hmm. I understand. And with your current yeah. situation, do you still, do you have to, um, like change the prices manually basically every day or do you keep like this steady, um, failure rate and it gets booked still? Um, well, whenever we first, um, first did list, our daily rate was very, very low. I will say mm -hmm. that Airbnb kind of like 
lowballed us as far as that goes. So we did go through manually and um, bump up our prices. And then when we found out that July was such a booming uh, month, we went in again and uh, changed our price ratings. But yeah, we do do that manually as far as like um, what our bookings are. And if like we're having a slower month, we'll go in and, and adjust. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Do you yes. use any um, pricing strategy? Do you open, for example, your calendar one year in advance, four months in advance? And how do you plan to um, price during the highest months that are oncoming? Um, we were mainly just going through Airbnb as far as like where to start, um, what our um, what our competitors were doing. Where it was our first year, we were kind of like new to everything. Um, so mainly we just went around uh, through Airbnb just, you know, with houses just like ours and went from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, makes a lot of sense. And so far hasn't been any particular big challenges that you went through as an Airbnb host? Um, not really. We have had a great experience as far as like, I mean, everyone has been great. We've never got a horror story yet um, as far as that goes. Um, no, not really. It's been really great. But we have, you know, we did have a little bit of advantage of like listing our own home. So we didn't have that first big hiccup of investment money, you know what I mean, that we had to come up with for furniture and stuff like that. So I feel like that did help us. Um, but no, we've had a great experience. I clean them myself. Um, so even then, I mean, walking into our homes, we've always had a great experience with all of our guests so far. Okay, that's great. And do yeah. you also plan on expanding your Airbnb business in the future? Yes, we're actually looking at another listing. Um, I don't know how many in Fett County we will still get. Um, we'll probably do at least another one or one to two listings in Fett County. And then we want to try to expand, um, I don't know, maybe in different areas, maybe in different states, just so we could be able to travel to just have an extra house, you know, to go to. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I get it. And um, are you also planning to deal with remote hosting? I mean, is that an option for you as well? Um, it could be. Um, I feel like I would want to be more of more seasoned host before we go to remote, just because um, two is already a lot to do with. Um, yeah. So I want to get those under my belt first before we, you know, go remote. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, are there any tips that you would like to give out for future Airbnb hosts or current Airbnb hosts? Um, I will say amenities go a long way. Um, the price that you pay for an extra shampoo, conditioner, and soap um, just to have just in case they forget theirs goes a long way. Um, and a washer and dryer, I know that sounds, I mean, you can't really accommodate that for every home, but that has been a lifesaver for us as far as me personally cleaning them, um, fast, faster flips for sure. Yeah. And it will help you too. Um, me and my husband both are, he's the main host, I'm the co-host. So um, the faster that you reply to people, the better it is all around. That's right. Communication is yes. key. Absolutely. Yes. Now that you talk about amenities, I would like to make you one last question. Um, okay. When you did the market research, did you find out um, any particular amenities that are popular around your area? And did you consider that when you were, you know, uh, getting ready for this last listing? Um, we did where it was our own home, we already had the full kitchen and stuff. So that went a long way too, as far as like people, people are already paying so much, you know, during the high seasons that they do want a full kitchen to where like, you know, it would be, it would be cheaper on them to have like pots and pans to be able to cook one night or something like that. I will say the full kitchen definitely is an advantage. Um, also just, I mean, just having that extra few things, like we we do um, maybe just uh, the toothpaste and toothbrushes, just like two of them there, just in case someone forgets. And that's been um, a really great thing. Um, we, on our second home, we, uh, we invested in a hot tub. So we're gonna see how that goes. We haven't actually, um, our very first listing comes this weekend. So I don't know if that would be, you know, more trouble than it would be helpful as an amenity, but we will see. 
Okay, yeah, thank you for uh, sharing with us about it. I'm also excited to hear about your future stories when, you know, this listing also has um, like more time in the market. And yeah, thank you for your time and thank you for your tips as well. Okay, thank you very much for having me.